Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we face down thousands and come up with our own Nintendo Muso games. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how you doing? I'm doing great. I This morning, um, look, I don't know if this for sure, because we're recording it th- the night before the Nintendo yes. Direct Mini Partner Showcase, but I imagine that as people are listening to this, I am reeling from the exciting news that was revealed in this Partner Showcase. Oh, yes. Uh, All of the very exciting news that we know and understand and can comprehend right now in this moment. Uh, Mark, I was actually going to ask you, so if uh, if you're not, you know, totally tuned into uh, Nintendo News, you know, the second it posts, (laughs) um, like we are, um, there is a a Nintendo Partner Showcase that is happening this morning, uh, Thursday morning at 7 a.m. So likely it has already happened by the time that you're listening to this, and it's, uh, we don't know what's in it. Um, it could be some exciting news. I don't expect it'll be something so big that you and I have to do an emergency podcast. But Mark, what if we have to do an, a, another emergency podcast? Pull the ripcord. It's fine. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> That's good. I love it. Look, sometimes sometimes we do three episodes a week. Sometimes. <laughs> it happens. Um, but I'm not, I'm not really counting on it. Speaking of things you can't really count on, my copy of Sonic Forces, would you like to borrow it? Or at least would you like to attempt to borrow it? Um, I wonder if it ever got to its most recent destination uh, in, in, the, in the U.S. mail. I dropped it into an envelope and sent it off to a listener. Uh, and you could be one of those people to maybe get my copy of Sonic Forces. All you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. And I- give us a mailing address. Go ahead. I don't know why you always doubt the program. The program has always proven to write itself when we thought that it was on shaky ground. And so I have complete faith. I am blindly believing that the Sonic Forces borrowing program is going to continue because it is anytime we have doubted it, it has always proven itself to be perfect. See, I think the doubt is part of the dance. At this point. Like, <laughs> if we don't doubt the program, even though it's perfect, if we don't doubt the program, it may not function perfectly. This is so instructive. Can you really have faith, right? Mm, if yes, like, yes. if there's no opportunity for you to doubt. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mark, perfect. <laughs> when there was one step, one set of mm-hmm. footsteps on the beach, that's when the Sonic Forces borrowing program was carrying us. Right, and when there was just a blue streak on the uh, <laughs> on the sand, that's when Sonic was hauling ass. <laughs> sorry, sorry for swearing. <laughs> Uh, here's something you can do. You can review us on Apple Podcasts. We would appreciate it. Um, again, sometimes we put out three episodes a week for you. Um, we just like some, uh, like to see some reviews. It, uh, strokes our precious egos, um, and, uh, helps people find the show. More importantly, our, you know, who cares about our egos? They're, they're fine. Um, uh, last thing, last thing, Mark, this one's important. This isn't like reviewing us or borrowing a copy of a video game. This is about sharing Mario memories. We are celebrating Mario's 35th anniversary all October long with shows dedicated to the Super Mario Brothers franchise, Um, and uh, we're going to close out that month with an episode of Mario Memories. I've got my memories, Mark has his, but we need to collect yours, so please email us uh, no later than October 27th with your Mario Memories. They can be... Mark, what what kind of things are we looking for here? We're looking for like your favorite memories playing with your siblings the first time you ever played mario if you want to write you know like a um a poem or a short novella uh if you want to film something if you want to make a film like a stop motion wow. film wow. <laughs> and send that to us we will then painstakingly describe it frame by frame to the listeners of this show it can be anything is what i'm trying to express yeah, and, and look, we, we've got some uh, great happy memories. We've got some uh, sad memories. We've got some scary memories. Um, so just whatever you've got, send it on in. 
Um, nothing is, you know, whatever shape it's in, don't worry. We'll, we'll work it out. It's going to be great. Um, Mark, we had a conversation. Oh, uh, send it to Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Um, Mark, we had a conversation last week uh, ranking the, bow- the final Bowser fights uh, on Mario console games. Also, Wart was thrown in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we got called out a little bit on Twitter. Um, Paul, at Paul C. Pace, uh, tweeted us and said, was surprised you left out these Bowser final boss fights. Um, and then uh, included a gif of uh, the Paper Mario Bowser boss fights. Um, he says, arguably, I could put in Bowletta from Superstar Saga, but the final form is just Kekaletta. Uh, and then he says, where would these go? Where would they go on your lists? Um, Mark, first of all, uh, would you like to issue an, an apology for leaving out <laughs> the Paper Mario bosses? So I'm going to um, pray a caveat here and say that, te- like, yes, it is on a console, but technically it's a spinoff. And so... One, I think we were right to not count it. And two, I refuse to answer the question because that might be content in the future. Oh, yeah. No, this is a great point. The the best uh, Mario role-playing game bosses. Oh yeah, that, that that is definitely definitely content in the future. Though again, and this is something, this is a problem that we run into, um, is that then we've got to play all the Mario RPGs, right? And like three of them are good, so. <laughs> No, there are a bunch of them that are good. There's maybe three of them that are great. Also, here's the other problem, Paul. I don't remember a lot of these boss battles. Yeah, great point. But, you know, one of the things that we did say while we were talking about uh, boss battles in general is that, um, like, turn-based RPGs are usually uh, pretty good at uh, giving you a boss that feels like a natural, uh, like, conclusion to the journey that you're on. Uh, and you're using all the same skills that you've been developing the whole time. So, uh, you know, by that metric, they would all probably rank pretty high. I like this answer. Uh, so, Paul, that's our answer. Also, I, I don't know any of those bosses. Um, all right, Mark, let's get into, the, let's get into our, our, our topic at hand. It's a big one. It's a silly one. We are building our own Nintendo franchise, Muso Games. <laughs> I've used the word Muso twice at, at this point, um, and that that is code. That is uh, insider dork lingo for the Dynasty Warriors franchise of game. Um, you know that's we we've seen lately that uh, Koei Tecmo has developed um, a couple games uh, in this style using Nintendo characters, settings, uh, and like gameplay mechanics. Uh, so there's the original Hyrule Warriors, uh, which came out on Wii U and then 3DS, and then on Switch is a like definitive edition uh there is the fire emblem warriors and then coming up uh in november is the hyrule warriors age of calamity which is obviously going to be a uh, breath of the wild um dynasty warriors like game um so uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna take other nintendo anything else that is a nintendo franchise Mark, I don't know about you. I got a little bit loose with Nintendo franchise, um, as, as we are sometimes want to do. And we're just going to pitch out what those games would be. Um, but at first, I think we need a nice base. Um, what do you know about Muso games? What is your level of experience with them? Do you like them? Uh, just wh- how, how, What's your relationship with uh, the Warrior series? Yeah, I've only ever really played like really played one of them and it was probably like 15 years ago on the playstation 2 and a friend and i we were playing like i don't even know which one it was but it was like yeah. played co-op through the entire campaign and i loved it i've never like gone back and tried to play one by myself you you and i played maybe like an hour or less of hybrid warriors on the wii u when it first came out so it's a it's like um the thing that i enjoyed about it was it was just a great game to just like hang out with a friend and play through in co-op because the combat it's not mindless but like the combat in my mind is not where the strategy comes from in those games right the strategy of those games is like actually like strategizing on the battlefield and like knowing and figuring out like where you need to send your troops and where you need to go defend the combat itself like is great to just hang out with somebody because you're it's a lot of just like doing combos and like you know cutting down like hundreds of enemies at a time 
Yeah, I, th- I mean, the one thing that, like, all the Warriors games really excel at is just making you feel powerful. Because, like, just as a, a sort of, like, consequence-free thing, there's just, like, a swarm of, like, 50 guys that run up to you. And you're just, you know, jamming on that B button, and they're all just getting knocked around like crazy. <laughs> and it feels, I, I, like, I don't really know how it feels good uh, every time. Uh, you take out a uh, a big mass of enemies, even when there's basically no way they would hurt you. <laughs> um, and really all that's happening is like, you're just clearing a few red dots off the map. Um, so my, my experience is actually pretty similar. I think it was Dynasty Warriors 3 that I played a fair amount of on PlayStation 2. Um, I haven't really done the research to figure out which one it was that I played a lot of. It was in college. Um, and, uh, I don't think we were doing co-op, my buddy Scott and I, um, just handing the controller back and forth. Uh, we may have only had one PlayStation 2 controller. Um, you know, so this was between our sessions playing like the Enter the Matrix video game. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, so just really having a, a, a good time with it. And, um, more recently playing the, uh, Hy- Hyrule Warriors. Mark, you mentioned that we played like uh, maybe an hour of it when it first came out i've been playing throughout the last like week and a half since um age of calamity was announced and i am really enjoying it it is a uh the the story in the game is so uh, high rule warriors specifically is so like off the wall and and bonkers that uh i'm mostly listening to podcasts or whatever while, while i'm playing um and that feels very good you know to just like be like okay for the next like half hour i'm locked into this battle i'm listening to this episode of whatever um and like that is just a a a fun experience and the other thing that i get excited about there is that i get to spend time with these zelda uh characters right and uh, and especially uh in hyrule warriors that it allows you to play as so many different characters when the zelda series is notoriously stingy with who they let you play as it's always link you just play as link um so uh, it, it's it's super exciting to be like, oh, I get to play as Midna or uh, Fee from uh, Skyward Sword or Zelda herself or Sheik or Impa. Like the, it, it gives a lot of like fun opportunities to play as these uh, sort of uh, auxiliary characters uh, and really f- they feel as powerful and as fun as Link. That's a really interesting point because like um, with the Dynasty Warriors games, uh, like the one I played, I didn't. Like, I have no memory now. Like, I had no attachment to those characters outside of that game. But you're right yeah. that, like, in the Zelda games, we are so used to just playing as Link. So having the opportunity to play as other characters, like, would be really fun. I don't know that I really took advantage of that in the Musos that I came up with, but that's such a good point. Um, so that, that, that's, I think one of the things that we're going to be looking at as we're talking about what, like, a, an individual franchise can bring to the idea of a, of a Musou game. Uh, but I just wanted to, like, quickly kind of touch on, um, what the existing, uh, Nintendo franchise Musou games, uh, borrow from their, like, home franchise, uh, and bring into the Musou formula. So, you know, in the original Hyrule Warriors, um, there are a lot of the sort of like find the item and use the item to access new areas, um, like sort of Zelda mechanics. You know, you get bombs and you use bombs to blow up uh, boulders and then you can go inside caves. Or like I just played a level where I got the hook shot um, and, you know, could like, you know, go back up a like cliff that I had, you know, previously like vaulted down. Um, so like using a lot of those uh, sort of dynamics. Uh, one of the things that uh, Fire Emblem Warriors uh, is known for is really taking advantage of the Fire Emblem uh, weapons triangle of the like swords, spears, axes, um, so that like you know if you are an axe character, you're going to be more effective against uh, spear people, um, and so like really choosing you know who's going to go up against uh, what units makes well it is still very obviously a, <clears throat> a Muso game. First, it is uh, it uh, re- retains some of those fire emblem strategy elements um so i've tr- i've tried to incorporate that same thing into uh my picks here but uh you know so- sometimes more successful than others and one of the things that um you brought up in hyrule warriors being able to play as a bunch of different characters from different games but one thing that i also think that like they were able to take advantage of in hyrule warriors is because it is like uh, of the Zelda franchise, but like wholly apart from it, they were able to do things that Nintendo's never done, 
like sure. uh like female link like linkle you know and i think that there is like a little more freedom in these sorts of games to get away with stuff that you wouldn't do in like a mainline zelda game yeah absolutely so uh i think i think that sort of establishes like what we're looking for in these games what we're thinking about what we already like about them um we have a few that we have prepared um, but we may get off the wall here and just like start start uh, naming things. Mark, would you like to go first? Sure, I will start, and I'm gonna like kind of ease into this by proposing a Kirby based Muso game. Here we go. <laughs> so Kirby has like you know uh, I mean Star Allies is a great example. Mm-hmm. Kirby Star Allies has um, huge like, cast of characters, huge cast of characters throughout the entire series. So you could really use that as kind of like the uh, initial roster that you would play with. But one thing that I think would be fun in these Kirby, um, in this like Kirby Musou games is in the Dynasty Warrior games, like obviously the different characters you choose have different abilities and all that kind of stuff. But one thing that would be fun, and I don't know exactly how you would incorporate it, but is this idea that like Kirby can copy enemies' abilities. And so his like special attack is, and really, I guess like, any of the characters can kind of do this in the games, but um, the, his like special attack would, you could like get it from the different enemies. So you could still have like the blade knight, the broom hatter, like Rocky and like all that kind of stuff. Um, but then like Kirby's able to take it for probably a little, a limited amount of time. Yeah, no, that's great. And like, like you say, Kirby has such a, a vast, um, like a uh, catalog of um like partner characters uh that would be really cool to see and also just like bringing kirby into different spaces too that you could sort of do the uh the epic yarn kirby but you could also do um the sort of like claymationy one from the uh is it rainbow curse that uh like he looks really um like claymate uh, claymationy a little bit of planet robobot in there like have a mech kirby um yeah, I mean, that that would be super fun. I also, you know, in my head, um, when I think of classic, like, Dynasty Warriors, I think of kind of, like, vast open green fields. Yeah. And uh, I think that's, like, a fine place for um, this Kirby Musou to start because you're in dreamland. But then Kirby also goes to, like, completely bonkers places. And yes. so uh, a huge variety of environments through the course of the game. What are the uh, the the stars that like Kirby like jumps onto and then they they fly him somewhere new? What are those called? Oh, I don't, actually don't know what they're called. That those should be in the individual maps of this Kirby Muso. So like, uh, you know that you would teleport from like one end of the map to the other by like grabbing onto one of these stars, and it would smash down real hard when it got there and like knock everyone out. That would be awesome. It will probably not. I just looked it up. It will probably not surprise you to know that it's just called Warp Star. Warp Star, that feels yeah, that's that's great. I should have known that. <laughs> um, so that's just uh, I assume Kirby Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think for sure. And it really, um, with yeah. Kirby, with like a Kirby Warriors, any edition is going to be the definitive edition, right? Oh yes, one hundred percent. That's great, Mark. We're starting off strong here. Uh, so I I will also start off strong. Uh, I Wario Wear Warriors. Ooh, I already like this. So this is using the vast uh, catalog of Wario Wear characters, not Wario Land. Wario Wear. We're talking uh, Jimmy T, the like disco guy. We're talking Mona. We're talking Dribble and Spitz. Nine Volt, eighteen Volt. We're talking Orberlon, the <laughs> alien guy. <laughs> We're we're talking the 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 ninja the, like the little ninja girls cat and Anna. We're talking Ashley the witch who like would fly around on a broomstick, um, and Cricket young Cricket and Master Mantis who are like the kung fu master and his uh, uh his pupil. Um, but what I think would be super cool about this, and you know, it would have to have some you know absurd premise where like you're just trying to get as many coins as possible because Wario's a, a a greedy guy. Um, but I think what would be the most fun about this would be that like you i want to incorporate the like micro game component of WarioWare, so you're not just like running around in these you know like i, I mentioned with uh hyrule warriors that i'll set aside like a half an hour and play like one thing no no no, no, no. 
I want this to be like, here's a series of four minute Dynasty Warriors battles. Um, and uh, ju- just really, really leaning into like, this is in this crazy setting. And then like, we're done with that before you even have like the inkling that you're going to get sick of it. And y- one of the, so who would be like the, enemies that you're you know that like the hordes of enemies or because we're talking about like these little like micro games is it basically jumping to all the different like like dynasty warrior-esque games like the robotech ones and you know like the nintendo based ones and like all that kind of stuff um and then i mean honestly yeah i I mean you're you're, it, it could be that but it could also just be um, like each of the characters have like their own little world, basically, right? Like Jimmy T is always dealing with cats, um, and uh, you know Ashley's always dealing with like the devil or something. <laughs> so like they, they w- as you're changing setting, like the the ba- the baddies could change, you know, uh, accordingly. Yeah, I totally I totally see what you're saying. So would you be able to play as Wario? Is Wario a playable character? Great question. I feel like the answer has to be yes, right? Like, how do you do a WarioWare game where you can't play as Wario? Or is he the bad guy? Well, I... Oh, that's interesting. I would like the <laughs> idea of um, whether he's, like, playable or not, uh, that his mount in this sort of game would, of course, be, like, a motorcycle. A motorcycle, right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... I mean, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am going to... And I'm assuming that this is... Um, uh, Wario Wear Warriors Definitive War- Edition. Yep. W- WWW Wario Wear Warriors. <laughs> well, I, I, um, my ne- next proposal is also in the Mario series, but it is mm. a Dr. Mario Musou game. And what I'm imagining is that we're talking like some sort of like inner space, you know, um, body yes. wars type situation yeah. where mm-hmm. Dr. Mario voyage. is, yeah, uh-huh, in Bowser's Inside Story, Mario is like shrunk, Dr. Mario is like shrunk down into size and he has to go into somebody's body. Maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's like Waluigi um, to give him something to do. Uh, but you have like that entire cast of Dr. Mario World doctors Right. That you know that we've definitively ranked. Um, that you know, like I totally want to play as like uh, Doctor Dolphin <laughs> and Doctor Daisy, of course. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Mark, it will not surprise you to learn that uh, do- that Doctor Mario Virus Warriors was one of my pitches as well. <laughs> um, I I love this idea. It, do it, do you have to do any? Uh, what what elements from the original Dr. Mario get incorporated into this for so you? So I think viruses are clearly like the horde of enemies, like the little yeah. like fuzzy, like spiky virus looking things. But I was trying to think of like what c- puzzle aspect could be incorporated. And I was wondering if maybe it's something, because like to keep it still like real time, like what if it's something like Skyward Swords Combat? where different enemy types have like different stances. And so it mm. there is a little more like problem solving to it, but it's not exactly like a traditional puzzle. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was sort of thinking that it would be like a, a medicine based thing. Cause you know, with Dr. Mario, it's all like color based, right? That like you need red pills to fight red viruses. Um, and so maybe like you have to, you know, run or like, uh, touch base with like different supply depots and be like there are yellow pills here and so like then you've got yellow and then you're you know more effective at combating the the yellow uh the yellow viruses in this area um but then you'll have a tough time battling through the blue ones to get to the next like checkpoint and get the new uh medicine there i also feel like with um different because there are so many potential different doctors it's like what sort like how i wonder if we could use that same sort of like power up element to give them all like or a little bit different abilities because again my mind keeps going to like dr dolphin and i'm thinking that he's gonna dr dolphin in my mind is um like a tank type character right yeah yeah, totally but then you're also gonna yes but then you're also gonna have like the babies who are probably more healers or like they're magic users i feel like for sure sure yeah yeah yeah. that makes sense to me I, i i also like the idea that um the viruses as they are like populating areas or like, you know, they, that they've taken over a base that they are making the body you're in sick. 
Um, so like it changes the environment. So like if you've got a lot of the the red viruses that they're causing like a fever, um, and so like you're just gradually taking heat damage, and like the more of them you kill, the mm. fever goes down. You know, so that you're like you're actually changing the environment you're in as you get rid of the viruses. Do you think that the, in this sort of game there there would be like the traditional general role? like enemy general that there is in yeah, um, I think the so. warriors games. I'm just trying to think of like who would it be other and en- would it be enemy doctors? Would it be like Ooh. um viruses personified? I mean, I think I think it just I think for this to work you really just have to blow out the stable of um of viruses. Like there are the three main ones and then there are like a couple more that have been like added since then. Um, and let's just, let's just do that in like bigger versions of them and like, you know, uh, versions of them wearing clothes or something. <laughs> they're, uh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine be- with that. Like, yeah. They're, they've become immune to antibiot- antibiotics. Yes, that's right. <laughs> they're super viruses. <laughs> um, that's good. Mark, I love it. And I'm glad that we both got there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mark, uh, my, for my next entry, I'm going to a, a little bit talk about something that I don't know that much about, uh, kind of in two ways here, because we don't actually know that much about uh, the Warriors games. Uh, but Xenoblade Warriors is mm. a must make. Um, so the uh, the original Xenoblade is uh, like the beginning of the game is based around uh, the uh, the idea that they're so hundreds or thousands of years ago. There are these two giant, like, colossus monsters who appear to be the only things in the universe who are just locked in constant battle with each other until they run each other through with swords. So there's, uh, uh, and then, like, the rest of the games take place on the, you know, rotting carcasses of these two giant colossuses um, where people have just, like, lived. Um, So maybe, you know, a, a dozen years before the events of the first game there is a huge battle taking place between the homs which are the humans uh and a robot army um and it's happening on the sword that connects the two uh the two like giant colossus monsters uh but this is all part of uh, an enormous war that unfolded before the events of this game so very much like Breath of the Wild, Xeno, or, uh, Age of Calamity, um, Xenoblade Warriors would take place during that war um, and, you know, would just be leaning into, uh, you're obviously just battling um, these robot creatures uh, and you're bringing all of the Xenoblade stuff that I don't understand or even like that much uh, <laughs> uh, to bear in, in these, uh, in you know, one of the things that I do genuinely love about Xenoblade is the environment. Um, you know, it always looks like this. Uh, it's always very green, very big. Um, and like every now and then you are able to get a sense of like the actual scope of things and just realize that you are a tiny little speck running around on these enormous creatures that, you know, died centuries ago. Um, so that feels like a super cool setting for a, 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 di- or a Dynasty Warriors game. Yeah, I completely agree. I feel like I agree with you that xenoblade that entire series like the the backstory mythology of it of like the world is so much more interesting to me than like the micro story of the game um and so yeah i would love i would love to to have an opportunity to just like run around and exist in that world yeah, and I don't know what the like mechanics are that that you you could take from it. I know that uh, Xenoblade Two has a lot of like your equipping blades, which are like uh, uh, other characters that like function as like your sidekick. So maybe that's this too. That like whenever you go into battle, um, you are your warrior character, but then you also have like a separate um, sort of support um, weapon slash character that goes with you. Um, but again, I don't totally understand. <laughs> I don't totally understand that mechanic either. So, well, my next one is a little bit of a cheat. Well, sorry, mm. I assume that that one is called. Um, That's Xenoblade Warriors. Yeah, Xenoblade Warriors Definitive Edition. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so uh, I my next one's a cheat a little bit. It's like it's not a Nintendo franchise. We talked about it enough on the show that I think um, it is one in our hearts, and that of course is Castlevania. And I would love to see a Castlevania Warriors. Um, of course, like I think, I think that a good like core set of characters to start with might be the characters from Castlevania Three: Trevor Belmont, uh, Sifa, Grant, and Alucard. 
they all have like different move sets yeah. you know uh they sifa is the like magic user um grant is the thief and then alucard is like uh magic pretty boy which like perfect swordsman he's vampire he's dracula backwards <laughs> He's Dracula uh, if Dracula was looking in a mirror. Um, uh, which he couldn't do. <laughs> um, uh, uh, just to, to interject here, I will let you keep going, of course. This was also one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just think it would be cool to exist in the world of Castlevania. And the one that I'm... Th- like, what I would like to see is I would like to see them... Um, so the first game, the first Castlevania game... Like when the credits are rolling, or when it's, you're on like the um, attract screen, it has this like, oh, uh, you're watching a movie, like it's an old horror film. There's like film strip yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And uh, apparently, that was kind of just like an accidental thing that they kind of like backed into. It wasn't like the thesis statement when they were making the game. But uh, I would love to see like that sort of, hey, it's like a 1930s horror like film aesthetic in the entire game because i feel like that's something we've never gotten from castlevania and it's something that always really appealed to me as a kid yeah really lean into the like universal movie monster origins of of castlevania yeah exactly yeah and i mean this is the the one like maybe the only one where i'm like oh yeah the exciting part about this is the monsters right that you're gonna be able to do battle with a frankenstein with you know dracula with like medusa like you know just take all of the cool crazy monsters from throughout the castlevania series and like put them in there as you know whatever uh, you know moment to moment you're battling skeletons or who cares right um but like the the bosses and the generals and all of that stuff like there's going to be some cool cool enemies to fight in this yeah exactly um i don't know what uh you take from the like castlevania series series gameplay wise but i do know that this game will have the best music of any of these that we're about to propose (laughs) this one i feel like has the most like natural like oh yeah we'll just take like the um the weapons and you know like the sub weapons from the game and you can just almost literally just use those yeah yeah 100 percent. and uh like uh, konami is in a place where they're just like not using the the ip and seemingly uh you know omega force the uh branch of koei tecmo that makes these games uh can just like they can just like take it and just be like yeah we'll just make this game and it'll be pretty good um all right my for my next uh my oh, sorry. Musou that, of game. course, is yes. Castlevania Warriors Definitive Edition. That's all. Mm, very good. Uh, I had it as Castlevania Belmont Warriors. Ooh, I, I love it. Yeah, Definitive yeah. Edition. <laughs> just, just to thank you. Uh, j- just to like drive home, like you know, just to be a uh, coach more specific. Mm. Uh, all right, for for my next. And look, you may say like, oh no, Patrick, Mark's already done two of yours. Uh, are you going to run out? No, I am not <laughs> going to run out. I have a lot of backups. Um, but my next one here is Splatoon Inkling Warriors. Love it. Something happened before the events of Splatoon. The fall of human civilization, water rose, there was pollution and like fish wars, and there was something between the Octolings and the Inklings. We are going to see that. <laughs> we are going to see the downfall of humanity and squid-anity, Inkling-anity. Um, and I mean, of course, since this is Splatoon, you as you are uh, like uh, exploring the maps, you are also painting your way through the maps so that you can navigate around. Your uh, your retreat path is going to get cut off by the opposing army uh, painting over it. Um, it it's just going to be <laughs> Splatoon, and it's going to be a huge brawl. I'm this one makes me like physically hurt that it's not real (laughs) i'm so glad that you got splatoon in here because i had an idea that i just couldn't put a period on where it's like um it's somehow like an idol game so it's like callie and marie and pearl and marina are the characters that you're playing but like there was nothing like really to it um but this is this one makes so much sense like this is the perfect splatoon based muso game this is also one where i feel like 
totally easy to show both sides of the conflict. Let me play some levels as inklings, and then like we gotta do some others from the other side as octolings. And like at the end, it's just going to be the ruin of civilization anyway. So like, let's just bring these armies to their natural conclusion, so that like everyone then, uh, you know. Uh, at the end of it, it's just in a perpetual state of arrested development. And they're just like teenagers <laughs> forever. I love it. <laughs> so my next one um, is a Pikmin Muso, but I uh, you play it from the perspective of the inhabitants of uh, the planet that uh, yes. um, that uh, the generals like that Alf, Brittany, and Charlie uh, are landing on in Pikmin Three. Um, they call it PNF-404. So instead, like, you are the character, the playable characters are the enemies of Pikmin, yes. of the Pikmin series. So you, of course, have, like, the Bulborb, um, the Blowhog, the Fire and Water variety, the Mamuta, the, like, weird, like, stone thing with arms that can do a ground pound. And then the Pikmin yeah. are the fodder enemies. And, like, the generals that you are trying to defend your home from are Alf, Brittany, Charlie, and, of course, at the end, Olimar. Uh, this is incredible because all it takes is a subtle perspective change and, like, everything falls into place. Like, of course, Olimar and Alf and all these little guys are invading a, a, a planet, right? <laughs> and they're attacking the natural wildlife. So, like, yeah, th this makes sense. Be the wildlife. Defend your home. Defend your home. <laughs> it's basically like a Jurassic Park game from, like, the, the perspective of the dinosaurs. Just like on the Sega Genesis. Yes. It's, uh, I guess it wasn't all. For the, there was, like, two modes, right? One where you could play as... Uh, Alan Grant and the other one where you played as the Raptor. Do you oh, remember yeah. this? Yes, I, that is, yeah. I, I, I remember the commercials very clearly them being like, play as the Raptor. <laughs> Everyone's favorite character. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves the Raptor. You want to play as the T-Rex, come on. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this, I mean, th this game sounds uh, perfect. Do you have a name for it? So I struggle with the name. Um, because it is a Pikmin, like it takes place in the Pikmin universe, but yeah. it is not actually, um, a, like you're not playing from the traditional perspective. Right. Right. Yeah. This is a tough one. This is one where I think you just got to call up uh Nintendo and be like, Hey guys, we, we, we need some, we need some lore cooked up here. For yeah. Us. I mean, maybe you call it like Bulborb Warriors. Colon. That doesn't work. <laughs> Col colon, a Pikmin definitive adventure. Edition. Colon, definitive edition. Uh, anti Pikmin warriors. <laughs> um, that's a good one, Mark. I, I I like that a lot. It was on my list of backups. <laughs> um, okay, I'm trying to decide what I should go with next here. I'm doing it. I'm going for it. We're we're gonna we're we're doing five each, right? That's that's where we're where we've landed. Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. Um, Pokemon Warriors. So this, uh, you know, obviously your playable characters are Pokemon. However, you do not go into any battle with just a single character. You select your party of six Pokemon before you go into every battle. And at any time, you can call one back and throw another one out. Uh, you know, uh, type weaknesses and strengths are in effect for all of this. So it's really about making sure you have the right party to uh, take on, you know, whatever Pokemon are out there in the field. Um, this one feels so straightforward to me uh, and is another example where I'm like, why doesn't this exist already? There are so many Pokemon games and the Pokemon company isn't shy about like making uh, making games with other studios and especially with other Japanese studios. Why hasn't Pokemon Warriors already happened? <laughs> I feel like there's something uh, a little bit like grotesque about the idea of like mowing down thousands of uh of, <laughs> of, of, of pokemon how about what if it what if we like you know like mm -hmm. it's a little bit uh sun and moony where um there's like an invading like alien force or something like that and that is who you're mowing down by the thousands i don't know i don't know i want to play with the pokemon <laughs> look look as long as we're like oh yeah they fainted then it's fine <laughs> it's just they're, they're so like um, I, I would, 
it's just like so built into the identity of Pokemon that like what you're doing is battling them. Um, that like I know it's cute and I know everyone's fainting and whatever. Um, but like I just want I just want to see him fight on like a huge <laughs> grand scale. <laughs> I don't I, have a name for this one. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's like uh, a Pokemon Dogfight Edition. <laughs> well, I mean, what what is uh um what is Pokemon Tournament if not uh, Pokemon Dogfight? <laughs> I, I don't know. For some reason, there's a mental block in my head where I'm like, <laughs> poke like in those sorts of games, Pokemon right. fighting are like you know two uh, warriors sparring on the field. They like acknowledge that is just for sport. Look, Mark, if we're going to embrace war <laughs> in any capacity. I mean, look, it's I, it's a, a yeah, compelling yeah. pitch is always going to be all Pokemon against all Pokemon. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't have a name for that. Pokemon Warriors is probably it. Okay. So uh, definitive edition. And so the, yes, uh, the last one that I have is a little bit like the Pikmin one where we are reversing perspective. But my, my, I have always, it also takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom. But uh, I think for a lot of people, so way back in the day, I think they showed it off at Space World before um, the GameCube was even revealed. There was this like tech demo that was hundreds of Marios or many Marios yes. like running around yeah. on a field. And it always had this like, a uh, name on the internet that people would call it Mario like 128. Yeah. And uh which is of course which is just, also just double 64. Right. Yes. Yeah, Mario 64. Yeah. And so th- I think that for the longest time where people are like where on the internet you, people would be like where's Mario 128? Like is that like when is that game coming? And so I would love for the opportunity to pl- uh have like thousands of Marios out on a field but in order to do that, you like like it's probably like Mario got you know stuck in like a Xerox machine or something. Right, so right, he's yes. he's been like multiplied m- thousands of times over, and so now it's up to maybe Princess Peach and like uh, Daisy. Interesting. <laughs> and like m- maybe there's other like um, uh, princesses out there in the Mario in the Mario universe that we just haven't run into yet. And so they're like the heroes of the game. And your job, basically, I wouldn't say that you're mowing down Mario's, but your job is to, like, you know, like... I see. So you're already <laughs> backpedaling from, from the idea of the warfare and violence well, that maybe, are inherent to the series. <laughs> maybe you're just trying to, like, turn them into a goo, sure. and then you're, like, putting the goo into bottles, and then you pour, like, the goo that you get at the end of the game into a Mario mold... You freeze that mold, and at the end, it's like regular and then Mario you, you, again. You've made regular Mario. Yeah. Okay, so are are these like gooey Mario's? Like, are they like the the shadow Mario's um, that you see in like uh, Sunshine Mario Brothers three uh, Mario three D World and in Sunshine? Yeah, are, are are they like that, or are they just Mario's? Mm, I think they can take many forms. Oh, <laughs> um, are there also Luigi's? There could be in the expansion pack in the true definitive edition because the game I'm talking about, of course, is not the definitive edition. That'll come out on uh, whatever like the next Switch is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this is this just called Mario One Twenty Eight? Oh, yes, yes, it is. (laughs) We leave the the Warriors part is implied. (laughs) It's taking the spirit of a Warriors game, but since you are not in fact mowing down thousands of Marios. Um, well, you, you, are can't, them down. you can't. You can't <laughs> you truly car it. Um, the characters get mowed down in this. <laughs> um, no, that th- that's good, and I think it is fine if uh, not all of these games have the word warriors in their title. Remember, uh, Persona Five Scramble uh, does not have the word warriors in in its title, so uh, we're we're good there. I think. Um, why why did you go with the princesses as um, the uh, playable characters instead of say like? bowser or the koopa kids or whatever yeah i like the idea that you know how like linkle exists in um hyrule warriors and kind of only in hyrule warriors like let's see a whole bunch of like different like princess characters or like uh just different characters in general that we don't normally see yeah i i like that a lot and also like um maybe we can use some of the uh things from like super princess peach um on the on the ds like maybe like some of those mechanics can also like kind of 
uh, figure into this. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you also have like the move sets for a lot of these characters from Smash Brothers. Because I mean, Smash, of course, yeah. Rosalina will be in the game, but she's an unlockable character. We're not just going to give totally, it away for yes. free. No, look, that's Ros- That's what Rosalina does now. <laughs> Spoiler: she's in Super Mario 3D World. <laughs> I guess she was in the trailer too, so it's not that big of a spoiler. Anyway, um, yeah, you gotta you gotta make people work for that Rosalina. All right, Mark, which of my insane ideas do we actually talk about? Can I just can I just do like the quick versions of? Oh, of for a bunch sure. Of these? I think you should run down all of them, and then whichever one you want to actually like go into, you can. Uh, so I mean, obviously, I'd love to see a a, a Kid Icarus Muso. This one seems uh. Super self-explanatory, half in the air, half on the ground. Um, I think you could really only play as Pit, but who cares? Um, you're just, <laughs> you know, this is a, another game where you can fight Medusa. I'll <laughs> admit we're being repetitive there, but all the other like, uh, you know, insane uh, like cross of, um, uh, like I don't, I don't even really know what the identity of uh, the villains in. Um, Kid Icarus is, but it's it's like that meshed up with uh, Greek mythology. Um, of course, you're going to fight a Metroid at some point, um, <laughs> and then you're going to get on the ground and do battle with eggplant wizards. I mean, like, come on. <laughs> um, so uh, th- that one seems that one seems super obvious to me. Um, I couldn't wrap my head around either Star Fox or Metroid uh, mm-hmm. Musos, mm-hmm. even though they again seem obvious to me because they are both like you know, inherently more violent franchises. Um, but I, like sort of the the presence of like guns make it a, a little bit tricky there. Um, two more like way out there ideas I had, and then I'll get to the one that I actually want to talk about. Um, James Bond 007. Of Ooh, course, uh, so good. <laughs> a golden eye uh, muso um, where, look, I think we should honor the uh, Pierce Brosnan era of um, James Bond uh, movies in this game. Uh, so like all of the other, cause for whatever reason they had him teaming up with like other spies a lot in those four movies. Um, like there's Michelle Yeoh's character in, um, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, uh, and, um, Halle Berry's character in the last one, which the name of which is Die Another Day escaping me. Die Another Day. Correct. Um, and there was at the time, uh, like some rumblings about there being spinoff movies featuring those two characters. Um, so like. Let's just do that. And that's also where the series is at its most ridiculous. Um, so let's just transpose those into a, a, a big brawl thing. Again, sort of falls apart because it's like guns and they don't really brawl. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's silly enough that I feel like it would work. Also silly enough uh, that I think it would work. Codename Steam, baby. Um, I want to be, uh, you know, Abe Lincoln doing battle with some aliens. But Mark, the real and obvious answer for all of this is Donkey Kong Country. So good. That would be so much uh, fun. The enemies are obviously Kremlings. There are they they are such good cannon fodder um that like I mean it's it's just perfect and we have all of these um clearly defined Kongs which again we ranked like 3 years ago um that have such like specific attributes um that like we know and understand already we know how diddy kong moves we know how donkey kong moves we dixie funky like all you know we get all these characters and also donkey kong in 3d not very well represented right one game like 20 years ago and no one likes it Ooh, i want to play as cranky kong so bad that sounds like so Wouldn't much that fun be great <laughs> um and then i don't really know what uh what elements from the uh, original series like you bring into that um other than like secret bonus uh like areas that you can discover and then like get more bananas and it's all about how many bananas you can end the battle with yeah i don't know exactly how you would do this like i don't know how you would make it fun but one of the things you know that we talked about when we played donkey kong country 2 is just like the verticality of these levels and i wonder if there's a way to like incorporate that into um that like that sort of like muso combat yeah that that is interesting because like i feel like verticality is virtually absent from um from the muso games i've played which again is only two of them (laughs) (laughs) well i mean whoever has the high ground is prone to win so this is something that i understand also why isn't there a star wars muso game (laughs) that would be i know that's set in the clone wars oh so good man whoo 
I know that's outside the brief of what we're talking about right Shadows now. Shadows of the that's Empire. That's the connection. We're threading it. <laughs> we're threading we the needle. We did it. We did it. Mark, I'm proud of us. Um, all right. Uh, so those are the Musou games that we came up with. Uh, did we miss any obvious ones? I rattle off like six extra at the end there, so probably not. Um, but if we did, please let us know. Write to us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. And, uh, you know, uh, pitch us your Musou games. Okay, Mark, let's close this out. Okay, that is going to do it for this episode and this week of Nintendo Cartridge Society, unless something uh, just bonkers happened this morning and we got to pull an emergency episode uh, and talk about that uh, partner uh, showcase. Mark, what do you think the odds are that we're going to have to reconvene? Uh, I give it a solid 50-50. 50-50. I think uh, maybe 30% chance, which I feel like is high. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, uh, but that's going to do it for this show. Uh, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you share stuff. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. You can follow Mark. He's at MKE Mitchell. And you can follow the show, which is at Nin Cart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying Eggplant Wizard is our favorite Who song. And thanks for listening. That's right, Nintendo Cartridge Society listeners, what is going down? Are you ready for a promo? Let's do yoga. Let's get fit. Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Muriel. And we're the hosts of Hella in in Your your 30s. 30s. A podcast about a cool couple trying to do adult stuff. So each week we invite you to join us as we try to learn things we should probably already know, like how does a stock market work? Can we install that bidet? Why are all of our houseplants dying? This is a podcast for people of all ages, because remember... Age ain't nothing but a number. But being Hella in Your 30s is a state of mind. So tomorrow's a new day, let's order pizza. Campfire.